This is the MLW Radio Network. This is the Mind of the Meanie. Here are your hosts, the Blue Meanie and Adam Barnard. Peace, world, and welcome everybody to the Mind of the Meanie, the weekly peek into the world according to former WWE superstar and ECW original, the Blue Meanie. Cover wrestling, music, movies, sports, and lots and lots of useless knowledge all contained in the Mind of the Meanie. I'm your tour guide, Adam Bernard, and he is the Blue Meanie. Meanie, what's on your mind? Like uh, Rob Thompson sang with the uh, wonderful 90s band Matchbox 20. It's going to be a long day. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's going to be a long fucking day, today, dude. Um, as we're recording, it's 9.41 a.m. Sunday, January 29th, the morning of Championship Sunday. Today, the Eagles play the 49ers. Hopefully they win and hopefully go to the Super Bowl. But uh, prior to that, that game's at three. And uh, prior to that, I will be tailgating with the guys. As soon as we're done recording this, I'm leaving then going to the 4th and John tailgate for a little bit. And then uh, my buddy (laughs) Richard Christie from the... uh, Hey, this is Richard. Uh, Hey. Richard from the Stern Show is also tailgating because he, he's a Chiefs fan, but his wife's an Eagles fan, and they root equally oh. for, for both teams. Uh, as was the case last week when I went to the I went to tailgate for the Giants game in the divisional round, hung out with the Fourth and John peeps for a little bit, and then uh, Richard Christie and his lovely wife Kristen 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 uh, was the next lot over, so we went over, hung out with their folks, and. Uh, uh, had a lovely tailgate and uh, <laughs> Richard told the story on Stern this week where they uh, at the uh, tailgate they had a, a tent set up with a, a, a uh, piss bucket as they say in the history of, <laughs> as they say in history of the world part one uh, piss boy no they had a piss bucket <laughs> that's a deep cut it. right there man that's a deep and cut part two just finally came oh, out oh I know dude I can't wait I can't wait to watch it. It looks amazing. On Hulu, got to watch it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, today's going to be a long day. Uh, oh, dude, it's going to be a, it's a, it's been an exa- it's an anxiety-filled week mm. since the Giants game. Uh, the 49ers are a good team. Uh, I think the Eagles will edge them out. Hey, if we were, remember, somebody asked and asked me who, who I want the Eagles to face in the playoffs. I said I want the 49ers. Yeah, because you sure did. The lack of familiarity there because they haven't played all year, to, you know, whereas if they would have played the Giants, it would have been the third time. But they, then again, they played the Giants for the third time and didn't seem to have a problem. But uh, this is going to be a good game. I, uh, I I feel I would be remiss not to do this at the beginning of the program since we're talking Eagles. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's fucking gang day. Gang birds, you- <laughs> it's the best sound clips of all time but i also have this uh the super oh, rad t-shirt from heavy slime here that's amazing it says ready for pain and suffering from 2021 dallas sucks which you know you can see this right now you can see the shirt i'm holding up if you sign up and become part of our pod squad at patreon.com slash mind of the meaning um i'm actually because this is too small now i'm actually going to turn this into like a pillow for our house so uh Perfect. I have another shirt that heavy slime. I fucking love those guys, man. The guy that does all that stuff is, is absolutely incredible. So this is uh Mrs. Meany was the hit of the tailgate because she went and made a Eagles. She has a black denim jacket. She and she repurposed an Eagle shirt and a pa- Eagles pair of Zubas and made this like really cool Eagles uh, denim jacket. And there was a, a jersey I'd ordered online and didn't fit. And I was like, it was just sitting around. So she took the patches off that, like the shoulder patches, you know, the uh, with the Eagles logo facing each way, and put it on the front of it, and she put some spikes and studs on it. And, yeah, yeah, like a lot of people are like, "Where'd you get that jacket? That's Can awesome. you make? Me- oh, oh, you made it? Can you make me one?" Right. She's like, <laughs> "Hey now, hey what's now. up, Trent? Shout out to the Pod Squad joining us today. I am exhausted. 
I was up till probably close to 1 1 a.m. rather last night watching Same. watching the 2023 Royal Rumble. We got a lot to dig into yeah. today. It's going to be a heavy Rumble show today. Um, so as we predicted, we could start right at the top here because uh, we'll get to the wild shit at the end. Cody Rhodes, yeah, our your 2023 Men's Royal Rumble winner. I don't know if anyone couldn't have seen that coming. Perhaps maybe. Uh, someone who lives under a rock, but everybody saw that coming. Meanie, how do you feel about the Codester winning the Rumble? It, it, it kind of, it, well, you could kind of, well, you think kind of, you, you could see it coming. Uh, giving the momentum he had before his injury, and then going to the hell in a cell with the uh, torn pack. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then um, just getting sidelined. I mean, it just seemed like he picked up where he left off. And it, it made all the sense of the world. Had him come in number 30. Uh, first time back in the ring. Well, in front of people, you know, doing serious live action, you know, uh, since the injury. I'm sure he's been working out in a ring, you know, before this. But, uh, but yeah, it makes it makes all the sense of the world. Uh, the Rumble match itself was, this year was a very good Rumble. Um, I saw some sc- squabblings but i just scrolled past it online yeah. and whatever people just are never satisfied i was uh, i was just thinking the same thing i don't mean to i i hate when i because i hear it back when, when i listen to the shows and i don't mean to jump in when we're talking but when i think about things especially Please. if it's on on brand i i loved this year's rumble i thought yeah. it was exceptionally better than last year um even though like you know There was talk, they were like, oh, well, there wasn't really surprises, and there wasn't, like, a ton of shit, and this, that, and the other, and it's like, isn't the point of all this, like, and and we can sort of pull this apart a little bit, but, like, for example, Gunter, the Intercontinental Champion, he was number one, and he was the last eliminated person in the Rumble. Fantastic. And, like, Johnny Gargano lasted an insanely long long time. You know, they they highlighted talent like Karrion Cross and Gargano. And a lot of these new cats that are coming up and the new talent, the new blood, right? Edge came yeah. back, which was cool. Even Dominic Mysterio was in for like forever. I don't know. It was like 20 minutes it felt like. Yeah. And the whole thing, the whole argument, and I'll let you take over after this. Yeah. The whole argument is WWE is like, oh, they never push new talent. They never do this. They never do that. And then they push new talent. And they're like, oh, we wanted the surprises. Where was, uh, you know, where was Hulk Hogan? And it's like, what is, what do you attribute that? Like, what is that? Why are people so fickle when it comes to this kind of thing yep uh daniel bryan said the best fans are fickle Mm -hmm. and it's just uh i don't know i don't get it it was a really good card from top to bottom uh i thought i thought it was amazing that you know the rumble was on so early uh which made sense for you know later on in the show but um yeah i mean i from top to bottom they made gunther he was the first in last to leave you know, last eliminated. You know, technically, Cody was the last to leave of his own accord after he won. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really good. Uh, you know, uh, Sheamus was in there for a while. But there's a bunch of people who were just in there for a while. And there's a it's a lot of good shit, man. Uh, like I love the stuff with Edge coming back with the uh, Judgment Day, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, Beth Phoenix came back during the. Uh, the men's run. Well, she wasn't in the rumble, but she, uh, you know, she helped out, you know, helped edge, which is amazing. Uh, she looks fantastic. She looks like a warrior. Um, but yeah, I loved it from top to bottom. I, I was not bored one instant, you know, during this rumble where it was just like, all right, okay, let's get to the next. Time. I was invested this, this whole, during the whole process. And Courtney and I were talking about it a little bit before the Rumble. Just some numbers, some fast facts here from uh, from the numbers last night. Gunter was in the match for one hour, 11 minutes and 40 seconds, which is a new Rumble record. Sheamus was in the match for 52 minutes and 33 seconds. Johnny Gargano was in three seconds under a half an hour. Drew McIntyre was in for 39 minutes. Um, looks like the shortest time in the men's Rumble appears to be Baron Corbin, who was in for seven seconds after he was attacked at F5 on the outside of the ring by Brock Lesnar. Shout out to Baron Corbin, part of the Westchester squad up here with the CKY team. But uh, no. Easiest payday of the night. Honest to God, dude. Yeah, take an F5 and then get thrown over the top rope by Seth Rollins. 
See ya. <laughs> Fucking sign me up, man. No, Don't but, pay me an hour, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It was I mean, look, I I loved this rumble because and Courtney and I were talking about it. Every, like you kind of knew where it was going, right? Like you knew that Cody was gonna win. You you kind of had an idea. Like you you like and I said, like I kept saying all week, like they wouldn't be doing all these promo packages if it wasn't going to be a, a Cody win, right? Like it would be it would be ridiculous. It would be Lex Luger nineteen ninety four all over again, which I can't imagine Papa H doing something like that. But there were so many different storylines that were involved that were really like fleshed out. Like you have, you know, Lesnar and Lashley, you have the judgment day with Edge. You had so many different things. Uh, you know, even Austin Theory, a lot of his stuff was great. Yeah. And I felt like it was really engaging. I felt like it was really focused. And the fact, the part, the end part there with, with Cody and Gunter, I mean, that not only positioned Cody to be like back into the spotlight, right? But I feel yeah. like it positioned Gunter to be a main event player. Because yeah. I think once Cody wins, because we all know where this is going, right? Cody's going to win the belt. So yeah. I think once he does win the belt, I think Gunter is going to be somebody who challenges for it. I think Omas is going to be prepped for it if he can continue on his trajectory. But again, like all of these names are all people who are either have never been in the Rumble or potentially like are starting to come up. And I think it's great. I think there's a ton of great talent inside of this. And I thought it was I thought it was incredibly well done. So I, if I, uh, you just, you know, uh, jarred a memory with Gunther. I mean, I wish, you know. Yeah, I, was it every thirty seconds, every minute, every yeah, every every ninety seconds, I think it was. Okay, I wish they would have just sweetened the time and fattened it up a little bit, and just like Gunther and Brock have that moment just a little bit longer. Yeah, and I I wish it was Gunther that would have eliminated Brock because mm-hmm. I mean him and Lash, well I, him and Lashley, yeah, they have that storyline, but to you know build up a guy and say you know. He stood toe to toe with with Lesnar, and then to have him somehow, you know, you know, toss Lesnar out, that, that makes a guy. I mean, they made him anyway. Yeah, yeah he's just, made. He's a made man now, completely. But that would have been that would have been in just like, like an extra little sweetener. Yeah. To what they what they uh, were doing with him with having him in there the entire time, and I loved it. I loved it. Again, like I said, I mean, there's, there's, there is a reason why Gunter had that spot, and there's a reason why he was the chosen one to help position Cody to win. I thought it was a great story. I thought it was a fantastic match. I was excited to see Booker T back. That was pretty cool. But again, yeah. again, they're not relying on the legends, which it's like that's this is what we wanted, right? This is what everybody's been screaming about for so long. It's like, oh, we don't want Goldberg back. We don't want this. We want that. So then you get it, and you're like, oh, where's Goldberg? Like, I just, I, I don't know. It just fucks me up sometimes. But I do have a question for you, because since you were a participant in one year in the Royal Rumble, how, yes, dear. and I'm sure you've, I'm sure you've discussed this on multiple interviews, but just because I want to know, how fucking cool is it to be a part of that, right? Like, you go out, you know, I, I've watched the the, the uh, Rumble where you run out, and, like, is it just cool? Like, is it, is it exciting to be, like, in this fucking crazy match? Like, what's it like? Dude, it's amazing. Um because every show has like a battle royal, right? But uh, to be in the Royal Rumble, where you know Pat Patterson's baby, you know, and I've been in other versions of the Royal Rumble, but to be in the the official, and to be in one of the top Rumbles ever in '99, right? You know, uh, in Anaheim, it's so cool. Um, yeah, there's an anticipation. There's 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 like a, a process and an anticipation. Um, one thing, you know, the, the best thing about always listening uh, to people uh, paid off with this because, uh, you know, when I was in ECW and, uh, you know, learning under Raven, he said, you know, the best thing to do is when you're entering the Rumble, find out beforehand, find out who's in there and then and match up with somebody and say, hey, let's do a little spot, you know, uh, and, you know, just to get the, you know, the crowd up a little bit. So it's not just one person running in punch, kick, punch, kick. And, uh, I ran in there like my year. Uh, I was like, okay, who's in the, who's in the ring It's like tiger. Ali Singh was in there. And, uh, I said, Hey man, I pulled him aside. Hey tiger, would you mind if when I come in, put the boots to me real quick, go to shoot me off. I'll duck your line, give you a clothesline. I'll just do a little dance and then we'll pair off. 
was, he was so cool. He was, he was down to do it. Yeah. I'm looking at, and, the, uh, looking at the photo of it right now. Of you giving him the clothesline in the ring? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, when you do that, you tell the other guys, Hey guys, through my entrance, can you give us center stage? You know, the middle of the ring, we got a, a spot we're going to do real quick. And, you know, when people hear my music, they know to powder off and find a corner and just give us the ropes. And cause the, there's, there's, there's a rule with, within battle Royals, you know, no bumps, no suplexes, shit like that. Yeah. But, uh, with a, with a rumble, you can work your way around that because it's so regimented that you could tell guys, Hey, we're going to do this thing. Just, you know, find a corner, yeah. you know, when so-and-so comes in, find a corner, we're going to do this quick spot and then, go back to what you were doing, you know, business as usual kind of thing. So, you know, with my entrance, I know I, I always go, people go, why do people run it? Why don't they just walk down? Why, why, why are they in such a rush? It's, it, you run in to fucking get the crowd excited. Right. You know? right. right. Here's a, here's a little secret to my running. It's like, uh, I'd been doing this thing where I was running and I would like in my head go, and like, you know, like, like skip, like I was turning the corner. Uh-huh. And see me run out. I do the fucking like Fred Flintstone run out like purposely and do the <laughs> in my head. And <laughs> as I'm turning the corner and start running for like, I run out of the, the, the entranceway and go, you see my, me on one leg go, <laughs> and I like run forward. <laughs> and that's been my gift every year for when they say, uh, when they say the Thanksgiving meal's ready. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me running to the kitchen table. Oh, it's amazing, dude. I just, it just looks so, it's my favorite event of the year, like outside of WrestleMania, right? Because that's everybody's favorite, but like it's my favorite match. So to be able to like talk to somebody who's been in involved in that, it's just cool, man. It's just a cool thing. Well, well another little Easter egg, uh, back to the one I did. And, uh, I swear to God, Friday night, my buddy Julian texted me about this because it, it, it's subtle. Uh, there's a moment where Edge and Draws have me in a corner and they're trying to eliminate me and, you know, they're being funny with like, oh my God, we can't get them out. And I just reach over and you you catch me on camera and start tickling Draws. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And my friend Julian was like, did you tickle Draws? I went, and Edge. <laughs> <laughs> I had, you know, they got my legs and they're left of me. I got two free hands. So I reached over and start going, <laughs> And they legit just left me alone. <laughs> what did they say? Like, are they are or are they saying anything to you while you're in the ring and you're tickling them, or is it just like, like, what the fuck, dude? Or what? They... Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. There's other things you could do. Like, I, look, just be happy I tickled them, and not, I didn't reach over and pull out their armpit hair or something. Give <laughs> them a nice love tap right on the right on the derriere. Yeah. Yeah, there's, no, there's a little ribs you could pull. Like, you know, if somebody's getting their head scissors and a little bit too uh, tight, you just reach over and pull out some of their leg hair. No, <laughs> loosen the fuck, no loosen right the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, you just reach up and go, bink, pull one of those little hairs on there. Like, all right, all right, all right, all right, stop, stop. Got the point. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Reach over and just grab one singular armpit hair and go, bink. Mm-mm. And then, oh, oh, son of a fuck. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, it's yeah, so cool, man. The funny thing about Battle Royals is there's so much shit going on nobody fucking realizes. And, uh, you know, you guys are popping left or right, you know. Just me, if I'm in a Battle Royal, sometimes if I have a good fucking fart in me, I'll fart and just fucking <laughs> do the rip sign or run around and fucking just, you know. <laughs> just let it run around the ring there. Yeah, just... <laughs> Dude, it's, I'll, fucking, I'll, I'll bleed the radiator right, <laughs> right during this. Dude, I told you the other day I was at work and I'm fucking, um, I have gas pains. Like, I'm just like, it's just killing my stomach right at the top here, you know, just killing yeah. me. And I fucking went upstairs to the sixth floor, which is like, cause we have a staff bathroom downstairs, but I went upstairs to the sixth resident lounge and I farted so fucking loud and deep. I thought the fire pumps had gone off cause you know, it's fucking rumbling and shit. I was like, Oh my God, dude. And it was a long one too. It was fucking Dude, bad. I, I noticed that, like, if I eat red sauce, like, mm. too late at night and I'm laying in bed, there's that gas bubble, and you, you feel like you have to fart, but there's, like, a, a log jam in the way. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I don't want to kill my wife, so, I, you know. 
I'll just fucking, I'll, I'll take a powder, you know, oh, I gotta go pee. Yep. And I'll go in the bathroom, put my foot in the tub and just slowly like fucking bleed the rat here. Just <laughs> <laughs> what, what you do the, the one, che- you know, I call it the one cheek sneak or you, you pull your butt cheek. Mm-hmm. So, so it doesn't, you know, there's no, uh, muffling. <laughs> you know? there's, no, there's no clappage. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. no, there's no cheek clappage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you just do the one cheek sneak where you you know pull the butt cheek out and go here. <laughs> it's like the best feeling in the world. You're just like, oh, you know. But Courtney hates it when I she rolls over and like you know I just fart in my sleep and she rolls over and she's just like, oh, my, I can hear it every time. She's like, oh my god, <laughs> what are you so close to me for? I don't know what you want from me. But no, I I listen. I enjoyed this year's Rumble. I I uh, I'm ignoring a lot of the fickle. You nonsense on Twitter and just like guys again as in all things like <sighs> like what you like enjoy what you don't but like there was nothing wrong with this match I, I don't know what everybody's freaking out about yeah um, another a, a lot of mutant yeah. last night a lot of fucking people last night another divisive match was the Mountain Dew pitch black match between Los Angeles Knight which is his of course his God given name and uh, Bray Wyatt which yeah. Man, dude, I dug that. I don't know. I like that shit. I like the gimmicky shit. And again, it's like it's a it's a gimmick match, but it's also Bray Wyatt in his first match back in two years. It's L.A. Knight, who's fucking great at everything. He did the guy could read the phone book and be good at it. And yeah. I don't know. I liked it. What did you think? I liked it. I mean, you know what annoys me is it's not the WWE does a gimmick match. It's the WWE does a gimmick match and people who who are watching a match criticize WWE like they've never watched WWE before. You know, what on what planet is like a gimmick match like this something new where people go, oh, my God, what is this? It's WWE. Uh, They've had uh, hog pen matches. They've had, you know, uh, fucking... Was it the uh, um, uh, yeah mud ba- mud match or whatever where the girls wrestle around? And they had a the- zombie lumberjack match, right? So this is this is new. You've ne- you've never seen them do something like this. And you know what? They probably got paid a lot of money to a, put on this a shit ton of money. Yeah, you know they pay probably got paid more for that one match for Mountain Dew than most promotions make on a gate you know you know maybe in an entire uh, year yeah well yeah you know there's you know certain promotions oh, we've had our first million dollar gate well yeah, guess what they had a, a million dollar match right, that, <laughs> right. they didn't right. come out of their pocket you know, they didn't have to do anything just you know but um yeah th- th- it was good it was good i like the uh the blackout black lights uh brace you know, body paint once the, the neon lights came on. Yeah. Amazing. LA Knight's an amazing talker too. So if I had one small critique, it was just like the uh the setup between the end of the match and getting him to the stage to do the um thing where Howdy came out and dropped the the mm. elbow the gimmick. You mean Shane McMahon, so, right? We know that that was Shane McMahon jumping off shit again. Yeah. <laughs> now, if they're if they could have just tightened that up a little bit, where you know, uh, yeah, just made a little bit. It was I, I get they were doing going for the horror movie thing, where right in every horror movie, instead of just running out the front door, somebody has to run up a flight of steps. You yeah. know, just dude, the door's right there <laughs> in, your, in your home free. You know, but no, I, oh shit, there's a pair of steps. All right. I'm going to take these. I'm going to trip the whole way up. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. 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 So it's typical horror movie stuff, which is fine. But the match itself, I, I had no problem with. Again, you people- know, it, it was what it was. It was advertised. It was a blackout, a pitch black match. So, yeah. It's just like, oh, man, this is this. this. Like, guess, guys, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, man. Here, here's, shut here, up. It's the word trope. And here's every, or like, Every cliche. Here's every cliche argument. Oh, it's such a it's cartoon wrestling. It's so much. It's phony. You know, whatever, dude. It is what it is. It's WWE. They have entertainment in their name. Uh, get over it. 
it, it, I had no problem with it. Was it Flare Steamboat? No, it did, but it wasn't at build to be. It wasn't supposed to know? be Flare Steamboat, but here's another thing, too. Do you know who enjoyed that match the most? My oldest son. Yeah. And there's your answer right there, because he's the fucking target audience for Bray Wyatt in general. But also a match like this. He's the target audience for something like this. And you know what? It's 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 complex, but it's simple enough for a nine-year-old to understand. And he understands that L.A. Knight and Bray Wyatt are going to fight and beat the shit out of each other. And it's scary and kind of like creepy to a kid. Yeah. That's, I mean, you fucking mission accomplished. So. Re- um, wrestling be like a buffet. Yeah. You know? You gotta have a little bit for everybody. If yeah, if it was all the same match, it would be fucking boring, and you leave after the fourth match. Yeah, you gotta have a little bit of everything. Yeah, you know, even hey, if that's match isn't your fucking deal, go take a piss. Yeah. You know, go do something and, else. You know, I'm sure there's a couple matches where like right, I I could go take a shit now, but you know, <laughs> but uh, it was a good paper overall. It was a yeah. great pay per view. Yeah, I'm just putting up some. I'm sorry, premium live event. That's right, sorry. pal. It's a premium live event, pal. Meany. Yeah. Uh so now a couple other highlights. Bianca Belair uh retained against Alexa Bliss and the women's Royal Rumble match. Rhea Ripley went from she went pillar to post, pal. She entered at number one and lasted through the entire uh, match there. She stayed in for one hour, one minute and seven seconds, right behind Liv Morgan. Uh, they both had the, I think they're both in there for the longest amount of time uh, for women in the Women's Royal Rumble. Both of them have that record now. Only the fourth uh, participant in any Royal Rumble to go the distance from number one, next to Shawn Michaels, Chris Benoit, and Edge. Uh, that was a great match, too. I enjoyed it. Um, it was cool to see Chelsea Green come back, the way they yeah. uh, they brought her back in. She was in for five seconds, so I think she holds the record now in the Women's Rumble for the shortest uh, entrance. Which the second was payday of the night. Yep. Hey, listen, all I got to do is get thrown over the top by Rhea Ripley and come out and do my shtick. It's the Bushwhacker spot. That's right. Nia Jax also came back as well. Um, so that had a, uh, a somewhat big pop. I would say it was a, it was a divisive crowd on that. And again, people are, are uh, conflicted on her as well. And uh, they rebranded Dewdrop. She's now Piper uh, Neven, Piper Niven as back as her original character from, yeah. I believe NXT. Uh, NXT UK, so lots of positive stuff there. But that match was great too. I mean, they they the women did a great job. They did a fantastic, uh, fantastic match. And Rhea was the right choice, which we talked about last week. Yeah. I mean, Rhea was she's the only choice. I feel like she's uh, a rock star. Yeah, you know, yeah. she's she's amazing. She's like the guy. Yeah, you know, for the or the person. Sorry for the women's division. Uh, but yeah, she's she, amazing. You know, uh, start to finish, to, to have the endurance yeah. to go that long. I mean, it, it, the way it's you know set up, you know, you could take a you could bump it, bump down and kind of sell off into a corner while somebody else takes the focus of the match. But to go uh, over an hour, it's crazy, it's fucking amazing. You know, just you know, I can't, I can't imagine you know the. the the, the mental aspect of going into that match, knowing you're going to be out there for an hour, but I'm sure she loved every mo- minute, minute of it and, and, and accepted the challenge and she delivered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are so many, uh, great moments, you know, uh, dude, my personal, well, of course, you know, it was Oscar. Yeah. With the, with the blue makeup, you yeah, know, cool. I, I'm partial to blue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's really? Up. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, uh, Asuka, honor, honorary member of the BWO, uh, when they had the WWE uh, characters dress up as, you know, ECW uh, members, she dressed up as the BWO, which you're in. Yep. So, uh, no, I love, I love Asuka. Mrs. Meany loves Asuka. I love that face paint. Uh, love that she's doing the mist. Yep. You know, uh, I love everything about her. She's so mysterious. You know, she's... Yeah, she's the female Muda. So, you know, uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, and there, there's a lot of talk about how, in some ways, the uh, the female Rumble might have been better than the male. Mm. But matter of opinion, I enjoyed them both. I hate say, yeah. I hate doing that. Well, this is better than that, and uh, they, they were both really good. 
Um, they both held my attention for the entire time. They both told stories in advanced narratives. Yeah. Like now they're setting up Asuka to be, uh, what do they call her? Kana or Kana, her new character, her evil character. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's all like, and then again, they're advancing the Liv Morgan storyline. Now they're building back with Nia Jax and Chelsea Gr- Like there was a lot of things that were happening kind of all at once. Um, yeah. So I thought, it was, I thought they were both great. I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed, again, uh, I thought this year's Rumble, the two Rumble matches themselves were exponentially better. Like categorically better than 2022. I, I, I had this theory. <clears throat> that this uh, Austin theory? Yeah. Uh, because you know, between Chelsea Green and Matt Cardona, I thought Matt, Matt, Matt Cardona was going to come back. But in my head, if they had the women's Rumble match first, and Chelsea Green was in it, I well, there's my theory was if you had one, they couldn't do the other because it would kind of ruin the surprise knowing that they're married. You know, like right if. Uh, Cardona was in the male male one, then you would probably wouldn't see Chelsea Green because that you would know she's coming, right? But right. Chelsea Green was in the male one, you would know Cardona. I mean, if Chelsea Green was in the female one, you know would know Matt Cardona wasn't in the male one because you know th- they both have a you know they're married, so that what seeing one would you know spoil the other kind of thing. But uh, yeah, uh, later on uh, on Twitter, uh, Matt Cardona had a tweet, you know, with the Whoa. "I'm not booked." Yeah, <laughs> I'm not booked, Harry. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The photo, of him. I wasn't booked. So I'm sure. Look, I'm sure he'll be back at some point too. There's the the rumor, and innuendo is already swirling that he is has signed. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him come back. I'd like to see him come back as the Cardona, like the the incarnation as Matt Cardona. Yeah. Um, or if they were even like, you know, hey, I'm Zack Ryder, but you know. I'm really Matt Cardona. You know what I mean? Like if they, they were able to incorporate those worlds together, I think that would work. But Mimi. Yes. We have breaking news on this program. Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right. They are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard. What? It's crazy, right? From a beard trim to a fresh shave, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit Allows you to shape your signature beard with your look, Meanie, because you know Blue Meanie's got that s- specific beard look. Now you can use finally use Manscaped's products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using the promo code MINDMEANIE for 20% off plus free shipping. It's time to tame your mane. No one likes a, wide, a, wi- a weird beard, rather. So say goodbye to all your stubble trouble with Manscaped's Pro Beard Kit. Meanie, tell me about your experience so far with Manscaped's Beard Hedger kit well if there's anything i'm known for besides blue hair is an amazing beard and uh i've spent years trying to keep it clean keep it fresh and uh when i open up my package from manscaped with all those beautiful beard care products it was it was like something i a dream come true something i've been waiting all my professional beard beard care taking life it is incredible, and that blue beard of yours is going to look great when we're back at Icons this fall, or spring, rather. But even in the fall, it's going to look great when you use uh, Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This thing is a juggernaut of fixing faces. This cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair-cutting lengths, all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. That right. Face grooming doesn't need to be hard. Get 20 different beard lengths with just one guard. Plus, it's waterproof, so you can shave in the shower to avoid all of that hair in the sink, which is disgusting, especially if you're hairy like me. The titanium-coated T-blade is tough on hair, but smooth on your face, leading to single-stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. And friends, I feel like that's an innuendo somewhere. The Pro Kit doesn't end there. They have created the four dermatologist-tested formulations for your post-trim care first. There's the beard shampoo and conditioner. You need to remember that all of your hair is different so the beard hair is more coarse and easier to damage than the hair on your head. That's why this kit has made shampoo and conditioner specifically designed to moisturize, reduce ingrown hairs, replace natural oils, and promote beard hair, beard health rather. So when Meanie is out of the ring, he can wash that beard up, and not only does it go from blue to white, it's going to look healthy, 
natural, and fresh. Next, the kit has Manscaped's beard oil, an essential piece for your man facial accessory. No one wants a guy whose beard is brittle and dry. The oil relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath while adding a little shimmer and shine, making you look extra fine. Cap it off with the Beard Balm, a pomade that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look to attract any fellows or dames, depending on which way you go. The Beard Pro Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress and potentially moonsault off the middle rope. So go get 20% off plus free shipping when using the promo code MINDMINI at manscaped.com. It's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com and use promo code MINDMINI. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths. And we thank them, as always, for sponsoring the program. I have a question for you now that we're talking about Ripley. There's been talk and discourse about that she could potentially be the next China in a lot of ways where she challenges for a men's title, you know, like the Intercontinental title or the United States title. Two parts of this question. Could you see... Rhea Ripley challenging for one of those titles and do you think she would be do you think she would win uh yes and yes um here's the thing it's like I have no problem like there's that whole talking about intergender wrestling it's just so divisive <clears throat> but and I'm not really a fan of intergender wrestling but when it's done right Doing it just for the fucking sake of doing it. Like, eh, I'm like, eh. I, I won't shit on it, but it's just not for me. Uh, perception is reality, you know? Uh, even if the woman in real life could, like, legit beat the shit out of the guy, you're going into this thing, you know, one person's, you know, like... Rhea Ripley looked like she, she could beat any man's ass. China yeah. looks like she could beat any man's ass. You know, Awesome Kong looked like she could beat any man's ass. Dewdrop looks like she could beat any man's ass. Nia Jax looks like she could beat any man's ass. You know, that's when it's it's good when, like, the, oh, mm-hmm. here she comes. Absolutely not. Absolutely Rhea Ripley could hang with the guys and, Look like she could beat any man's ass and fucking dish it out, take it and dish it out. So absolutely. If she did it, I would have no problem with it because it, it looks believable. Right. Even if one person might be more skilled in fighting the, I'm sure Ronda Rousey can whip a bunch of the men's asses. But, but, is, it, but is it believable the way Ripley is, right? Like that's the thing. It's like, is it? She, it's the look part. And I, yeah, I could watch UFC and I could watch a smaller guy beat a bigger guy, but this ain't UFC. It's fantasy land. Right. You know, you know, if you want to generate heat or sympathy, you know, it's, it's, it's how you present it. So yeah, Rhea Ripley. Yeah, absolutely. She looks like she could beat any man's ass. So if she, depending on, you know, whatever belt she decides well, depends on what belt they, it doesn't depend, but it'd be interesting to see which belt yeah. they would choose to have her go after because the intercontinental belt's kind of been done, you yeah. know, which I, you know, but, uh, I don't think a woman's yeah. ever held it in the, the U S lineage. If she came out and challenged the guy, a dude for the belt, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm down. This yep. is cool. And it's going it to be a kick. It's going to be a kick ass match. And did it at mania too. Like, you'd be like, oh shit, this is great. This is going to be sick. Oh, absolutely. Now, speaking of crazy and speaking of sick, the uh, the part I've been waiting to talk to you about, because I saw your post earlier about um, one of the parts of this, Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns last night with the bloodline, which still, oh my God, still the, the best fucking storyline in professional wrestling today, maybe in dramatic television. Yeah. I mean, it's so fucking good. So Kevin Owens loses to Roman Reigns last night. Uh, Several pretty gnarly headshots, it looked like, like back of the headshots at the stairs. That first one looked pretty tight there from from Roman to to Owens when he threw him back. That was uh, when he threw him back on the the steel stairs. Um, Yeah. That that looked a little... I'm sure Kevin controlled it, but... Yeah, I mean, it just... I mean, if... 
they're both, I mean, they're both at the top of the card, so I'm sure they're, that's why they're there. But it's still, it looked like, oh, my God. Yeah. Beating the piss out of each other. They handcuff him. Excuse me, they, pronouns, pal. Roman in the bloodline handcuff KO to the ropes, and everybody starts taking turns with a super kick party. The Usos are just beating the shit out of him. And uh, Roman grabs a chair to get ready to hit uh, KO in the head, and he goes, no, no, no. Sammy stops him. He's like, no, 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 you're better than this. Hand, Roman hands Sammy the chair, tells him to do it. It's his final test. And after a little bit of hemming he, and hawing. He said, he said, you're right. I shouldn't do this. Right. You should. And he goes, you're part of this family. You want to go back to doing that jackass bullshit? Do this. Do this now. And yeah. uh, he turns around and fucking Sammy hits it. Roman Reigns with chair. And the place went unglued, man. But that wasn't even like the best part of it. There's the anticipation of the whole fucking thing from where, you know, yeah, you know, like Roman's throwing Kevin into the stairs, brings him in, hits the spear, does the pin. You know, they they, they have they're going to take, take care of the Kevin Owens problem. They they handcuff him to the post, which I I think they should. It would have been better if they did the corner. But what are you gonna do? Yeah. Um, uh, they handcuff him. You know, super kicks all around for Kevin, and then you know. The whole match, they're kind of teasing with uh, Sammy. You know, Sammy's telling, you know, Kevin, just stay down. Yeah. Just stay. Just stay. St- what are you doing? Stay, stay down. down. Yep. Showing, showing that he's still a, a human being and has emotion, you know, for, you know, his childhood friend. Stay down. What are you doing? And then, um, you know, I mean, the, they, they, they built the anticipation that's the part of it is if they would have just rushed into it, it wouldn't have been as as effective, you know, like the thing, like, you know, even if you know, it's coming, it's the anticipation of it yeah. coming and time down. And, you know, I said this on Twitter and I mean, it, I love Sami Zayn to me. Like he is like, he, if you look in his eyes and his emotions, it's like, when Robin Williams does a, a serious role like Goodwill Hunting, or you know, you know, with the beard and the eye, it's all in the eyes, you know. And he he emotes so well with what he does, and uh, you know, him just like looking the whole match like worried, and then you know he's you know he he's trying to be the fucking you know the the level headed one saying you've done enough. You, you've beat his ass. You've done enough. You kicked him, this, that, and the other thing. No, this, this is a bridge too far. No. And, he, and you know, he told, he says to Roman, you, this is a, you're above this, which, you know, I, you see the light bulb go off and Roman saying, he goes, yeah, you're right. I, I am above this. That's why I'm, I shouldn't do this. You should do this, which kind of puts the onus on, you know, uh, on Sammy, like, you know, if Sammy would, you know, if Sammy had just like not stepped in and Roman did it, then he wouldn't have had Sammy to do it. But like the fact that he interrupted, Sammy interrupted and said, no, oh, you're above this. You know, Roman's like, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't have to do this. You, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. Yeah. Oh, and just the anticipate. And there was that one moment where he looked like he was going to do it. And Roman turned around and he kind of put the chair back down and the crowd's like, uh, uh, and then like, waiting, and waiting, and waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah. Just, just listen to the fucking crowd, man. The whole time. Just listen to the crowd. And when he hits it, it, it was a le- electricity went through that building where uh-huh. you just, there's just the sound of the people was amazing. Gave me goosebumps. And then this, you, you see the Usos and their reaction, just like the stunned, like, yeah. what the fuck? And then, you know, uh, you know, it just, it was, it was so well done. Well, that's the thing is, you know, you, the, the, the place comes unglued. I love the shield callback too. I loved yeah. the callback, yeah. you know, the classic Seth Rollins turn where he hits Roman and, and, and Dean Ambrose with the chair. Except and, this time it was for somebody turning baby face. The last time right. it was somebody, you know. That's the thing, but it was like, you know, he's somebody that he trusts. It's somebody that he, you know, and, and again, like I've seen a ton of great discourse on it, but like, you know, Roman 
like you don't feel bad for him because he put himself in this position, but you do because you're like, okay, well now we really can't trust anybody. And you can see how like as the tribal chief, he's starting to become unglued as like, you know, like, oh, I can't, uh, you know, he's insulating himself uh, to use like a, a historical narrative. It's almost like Richard Nixon right before he resigned, right? He's just insulating sure. himself from everybody because he's like, I can't trust anybody. And what do I do? And he's becoming all paranoid. And the like fucking a, like a dictatorship. Exactly. Right. Like, it's just like the final days of the dictatorship. Uh, but the part that stuck to me, man, and made me emotional was yes. fucking Jay Uso. Just yes. like falling the fuck apart, right? And I have said, we've said it on the show, I've said it on Foundation Radio, I've said it everywhere I've gone, main event Jay Uso is the fucking one. He yep. is the one to stop the tribal chief, like unquestionably. And he fucking rolls out of the ring. He doesn't stare at Sammy. He's not glaring at anybody. He's glaring at Roman. He's staring he, at Roman and Jimmy. He, he was saying to uh, Sammy, dude, what are you doing? I vouch for you. I... You know, just the emotion that came out, like when you do something for somebody and they just go against the thing, like when somebody puts their neck out in the line for you, like the way he did. And just for Sammy to, but it was, the beauty of it is everybody was put in a position where they had no choice. Right. That's the thing. Right. It's like, that's, and it's also too, like Jay is in this position now because he vouched for Sammy. And he's like, yeah. fuck, I, I just got fucked over here. But it's also, too, like, the way he stared at Roman was like, you know, because now he's thinking, oh, fuck, like, what am I going to do about the tribal chief? But it's like, am I really supposed to be, like, is this really what I want to be doing right now? You know, like, am I going to vouch for it? Like, there, it's just so the character Layered. work and the layers of it. It was like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Like, this is so good. Oh, and Heyman, of course, I mean, the greatest of all time, just yeah. selling the shit out of it. And it was just, it was just incredible. It was absolutely just, it felt like magic. It felt like we were watching magic on TV. It made me feel like I did when I was a kid. Yeah. And it, it was, it's beautifully done. And it, it's the fact that they've let it breathe. You know, they've, it's it, like, you know, most angles last couple of weeks now or pay-per-view to pay-per-view. This has been an ongoing thing. It's 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 breathed like a fine wine. Yeah, you know, they've given it some air, and you know, I wish WWE would just do a whole thing of the bloodline storyline from just do a compilation of that of that on the Peacock of just beginning all the way through of just this whole yeah blood storyline. Go all you the know, way it, back to the pandemic with uh, what was it payback or. Fast lane whenever he won the actual title, when he won the universal title. Yeah. Yeah, it's so so good. So I'm, good. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here. It looks like the Elimination Chamber, Vanessa's in the group chat here, uh, February 18th, the Elimination Chamber is going to be in Montreal, which sounds like where Sammy and Roman are going to uh, are going to eventually tie up again here. But That's going to be electric. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Dude, and they're going to be in his hometown. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Sammy's hometown. Fuck, fucking hell, dude. Like, that's going to be nuts. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be beautiful. If you haven't seen it yet, go literally stop, like, stop the show here before we get to Ask Me Any. Pause your show. Go watch the Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns match, and then come back and listen. The only other question I have before we get into to Ask Me Any is, now that all of this has happened, and now that Sammy's out of the bloodline and, you know, do they set them up where it's the Usos at versus Kevin Owens and Sammy for the for the tag titles? Do you think that is? Do you think they go there now because it like it doesn't feel like that's the right way to go, right? It's going to be awkward, you know, defending those belts. Yeah, I mean, what do they do with the tag belts? They don't add the belts for both shows. Now they have to split. Uh, yeah. That's you know where we go to Raw and finally figure shit out. You know that's. It was the perfect cliffhanger for you to want to go see Monday Night Raw this Monday. Here's the other thing I'm thinking. Sure. I think this is how they split the titles, the main titles. Because they've been talking like they've been running rough shot for months. The bloodline's coming in, beating up everybody on Raw, doing all these things. And now Sammy and KO just got their asses handed to him in the ring. I think potentially there could be a way for them to angle out of it. Because again, it's like, you know, you have this weird dance where you like you don't have a champion on raw 
how are you going to protect? Like, if the goal is, if Dwayne is actually coming back, right, how do you protect Roman so he doesn't get beat on night one for the belt from Cody? You know, right. so it's like, I, I feel like they're, I feel like they're also positioning themselves in a lot of ways to sort of undo some of the things that are handcuffing them in a lot of ways. But yeah. we shall see. I can't wait to watch Monday Night Raw. I'm very excited. But one thing I'm also very excited about right now, Blue, yes, is to ask you a question. What was that? Are you ready to ask me any? I would love to. It's time to ask me anything. Ask me something. Don't forget, tweet us your questions using the hashtag Ask Meanie, and we may or may not ask them on the show. Uh, we <laughs> ha- we asked uh, a lot of because there's some we we see that we're not we're just not going to answer. But uh, there are uh, this is a couple of wrestle or uh, excuse me Royal Rumble related questions. Matt from Dover wants to know, in light of everything's uh, uh, last night. Will the, do you believe the main event at WrestleMania will be a triple threat with Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, and the Tribal Chief? I think we'll figure that out at Elimination Chamber, but uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be. I, I don't know if they want to make it a three way because what would be the issue between Sami and Cody? You know, to or what? And why would Cody uh, allow Sami into his match? which is probably they're going to have to create an issue there for Cody to go, all right, you want in, here we go. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. So it's just a matter of creating an issue where they, if they do, if they do make it a, a triple threat or, you know, three way dance, whatever you want to call it, they got they have to create an issue where somehow Sammy gets in on it. But also it takes away from, it would take away from Cody's storyline because he's trying to win the title that his father never won. So it would just, uh, it would kind of take away from the mystique of him going for that title. So I don't know. I don't know. And that's why, you know, uh, that's the beauty of it is the beauty of pro wrestling is not knowing what's going to happen. That's why people say, Oh, okay. Fabe's dead. No motherfucker. You're not, there's, so pe- there's people in on the production meeting and it's not you. Right. You don't know what happens until that fucking final three count comes down. Nobody does except for the people there. So, you know, kayfabe's alive and well. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, 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 that's, that's a touchy thing. Do you let him in and take away from Cody's quest for the belt? You know, the win that fought fa- when the belt, his father never won. But there's also the issue of Sammy and Roman, and that's going to be the beautiful thing leading up to on the road to WrestleMania. That's right. I can't wait, dude. I'm excited. Uh, Ivan Rivers wants to know, how fun was it seeing your own mug run down to the ring in WrestleMania 2000 for Nintendo 64 during the Royal Rumble matches? The Rumble sprint style from that game was iconic, and your character doing it was how I became a wee mini or wee meanie head as a youngin. Dude, it is amazing. Uh, just to be in a video game in general, uh, as a fan of that line of video games, because initially it, it, they had the WCW license with Revenge, <clears throat> and then when I found they were doing WWE games, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Uh, with this, the THQ and uh, I want to say the Jukes engine. I could be wrong on the Jukes part, but it was definitely the THQ. Uh, amazing. Just uh, I was a big fan of that game. A uh, big, big fan of that system going into it. And then when the, once they told me I was going to be in it, and then they started doing all the, the photos for the game and putting and, you know, put me into the game and stuff like that. It's bucket list stuff there. You know, everybody's like, oh, I want an action figure, which I do want to. I did want an action figure. But to be immortalized in a video game and probably one of the, the better video games, it's, it's an irreplaceable feel. It's it's a special feeling. Brad can't sell a thing. Stanton wants to know: Would it be a good idea one day to have someone totally unexpected win, like a mid Carter that would shock the world, then worry about the storyline later? It could be done. I mean, it's got to be done right. You know, uh, could be done. Especially if it's, uh, you know, if you think, 
<clears throat> where you're expecting somebody to win and then somebody they're, they're feuding with them cost them the rumble match. And right as they're about to eliminate the, uh, I hate saying lower tier guy, but you know, uh, they cost them the match and somehow, you know, uh, you know, the cause of distraction and where, where the, the, the other guy eliminates the guy who's supposed to win or in the eyes of the people, the guy who's supposed to win because <clears throat> nobody really knows who's supposed to win until they win it. Yeah. So uh, if it's done right, it could be done, you know, to make a star. And yeah, you know, like you said, you know, you can worry about that later where they have hell in a cell for the, uh, the rights to the WrestleMania match, put that on the line as a stipulation or whatever. And then he can you know, go about, you know, getting that stipulation back in a roundabout way. He gets circ- circumvent the rules by having that stipulation put into a match at the next pay-per-view yeah. leading up to WrestleMania. Uh, Shackleford, Andrew Bailey from the pod squad just dropped a question in here that is off topic, but important and important question. What is Meany's official NFC championship score prediction for today's Ooh. game? Oh man. Here's where I look like an asshole, right? <laughs> well, I either look really smart or stupid. I don't know. Uh, I will say it's going to be a good game. And, uh, I've been relatively calm through these playoffs. I was even calm going into the Giants game, but holy shit. Um, games today, which I can't believe it's here. My stomach is such a fucking knot. Um, it's going to be a good game. I would say Eagles 21, 49ers 17 in, in, a, in a close game. Both defenses are great. Here's my matchup. Defenses are great. Both defensive are great. Um, but 49ers are susceptible to the deep ball. Uh, you can easily, you might not be able to run on them, but you can go deep as a, you know, I've been watching, I watched, they played last year and, and, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Smith, AJ, uh, God damn, Devontae Smith. Mm. Jalen Hurts went deep to Devontae Smith for like a 60-yard fucking bomb. And they were, you know, he was wide open. You can get wide open on these guys if you go deep. Uh, the only thing where the Eagles might hurt is like if, you know, uh, Brock Purdy does the short passes. Right. You know, they just you know, dink and dunk for three yards at a time. But I give it to the Eagles and their defensive line because they can get pressure with just a front four, where you don't have to, you know, you know, worry about blitzing. You know, when you blitz, you know, you're opening up, you know, to a deep pass because there's no safety involved. But uh, I I believe that the the front four is going to the, the snack on Brock Purdy. I think the front four is going to make Brock Purdy really uncomfortable. Um, and they're going to flush him out to his left, which he's anytime he, he, flush, he gets flushed out to his left, he, he seems to make mistakes because there's a couple passes in that Cowboys game where Diggs dropped a cut, you know, an interception. There's a couple interceptions to be had on the Cowboys part in the game last week. So uh, I don't think the Eagles dropped those interceptions this week. So if you get Brock Purdy, uh, uncomfortable and he makes a has to make a rush decision i think there's going to be a couple turnovers mm. when the eagles and the eagles will capitalize on those and score yeah i am so, I, eagles 21 49 or 17 let me do this right this time i am hopeful yeah. that the birds win today yes i don't know for sure obviously but i'm hopeful that they win and i'm hopeful that i didn't just jinx us just now but meaning i am also happy to be doing this program with you each and every week. And I'm happy for the pod squad to be here with us again. Uh, meaning the most important question, I feel like, where can everybody find you on your social media? Uh, you can find me in the bathroom on the floor. <laughs> with the kitty litter bucket. Uh, I would, <laughs> just uh, just in, in, a, in a ball of emotion. <laughs> During the course of this game, I'll be on the bathroom floor at McCusker's. That's right. 
because I'm we're gonna go to tailgate, but then like at two o'clock we'll head over to McCusker's to catch the card game. So that's where you where you'll catch me. Uh, <laughs> seriously, if you would like to follow the Blue Meanie on all forms of social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok uh, at Blue Meanie BWO on all forms of social media. If you would like to support the Blue Meanie, go to prowrestlingtees.com slash Blue Meanie. If you would like to support Mind of the Meanie, go to prowrestlingtees.com slash Mind of the Meanie. Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand, go to collarandelbowbrand.com. Use coupon code Meanie to support the Blue Meanie. But now you can also use the coupon code Mind to support Mind of the Meanie. Use coupon code Meanie or Mind and save 10%. Uh, Go over to madcatbeardcare.com. Get the blue spruce. My boy Josh Thornton is doing an amazing job taking care of the kitty cats. Every dime you spend at madcatbeardcare.com goes over to taking care of feral cats in the area. He takes them to the, the bag, gets them looked at, gets them fixed up, and uh, releases them back out into the wild. So go to madcatbeardcare.com and get yourself some of the blue spruce. Shout out to my boy Jim Nelson over at glaciersofice.com. Uh, Jim Nelson made a three of three only handmade custom air, custom BWO Air Jordan 1 sneakers for Stevie Nova and myself. Each pair takes Jim about 50 hours per pair to make. So that's amazing. So if you want to see a lot of behind the scenes, behind the scenes photos or videos, follow Jim at G O I kicks. That's G O I kicks on all forms of social media. Uh, if you want to, uh, have me do a special video for you, go to cameo.com slash blue meanie BWO. Yes, that's right. The blue meanie will do a specialized video for you over at cameo.com slash blue meanie BWO birthdays, holidays, well wishes. Let's have fun. Let's not be too mean. I like to be uh, a good spirited fella, but, uh, yeah. Cameo.com slash blue mini BWO. But most importantly, Mr. Bernard, where can we find you, Chico? Thank you, Mang. I appreciate you. Uh, you can go and listen. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, it's still on Mastodon as well, uh, and TikTok. Uh, you can find me there at This Is Goober. Yes, it's my handle. No, I'm not changing it. It's a brand, pal. You can also listen to my other podcast, Foundation Radio, by going to foundationradio.net and checking out the archive there. Don't forget to watch the Wrestling Hour on Premier Streaming Network. It airs every Wednesday at 3 p.m., so you can take a look there. Uh, this week's episode is going to be my rundown of the Royal Rumble, also uh, with some footage from my, uh, my interview last year with WWE Hall of Famer Rob Van Dam. So go ahead and check it out at PremierStreamingNetwork.com. Sign up today. Don't forget to go to the Feinberg Method if you want to sign up and change your life. It's uh, not just physical health, but also mental health as well. Use promo code Goober and save up to 20% on your entire purchase by going to the Feinberg Method.com, uh, pro wrestling tees.com slash foundation radio, pro wrestling tees.com slash mind of the meanie. Pick up a t shirt and support us and keep the lights on at Casa de Mini and also the Barnard home for wayward and troubled youth. Patreon.com slash mind of the meanie. Sign up today and be part of the pod squad. Watch us record this early and ad free, and you can see me in my pajamas. Also, we want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring the program again today for the Blue Meanie. I am Adam Bernard. Join us again each and every week as we take a trip to the mind. Go birds. Peace. This episode of Mind of the Meanie was recorded and produced by Adam Barnard and was engineered by Carl Pinnell. Additional production and narration provided by Sam Kreps. Our executive producers are Josh Chernoff, Adam Barnard, and the Blue Meanie. Our opening theme is performed by the Swamp Candles. Our closing theme is performed by Chikara. The show contains original music produced by Enrichment. Get additional bonus content by becoming our patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash mindofthemeanie. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at mindofthemeanie. This has been a Butts Carlton Media Production in conjunction with the MLW Radio Network. Butts Carlton Proprietor. That was Blue Mini's brain out. The world of MLW Radio never stops.